it's an honor to uh, be part of your learning here for your ministry and your life. We call these seven sessions that we're going to share with you a Miracle Life Seminar. Today, we're, uh, we're opening this session and we're going to read as a scriptural base from the book of Acts, the first four verses. Now, I think it's important that, uh, that these ideas that we're going to share with you, the seven major ideas for life and ministry, that they're all in the first four verses of the book of Acts. And when you think about it, isn't that where they ought to be? The ministry of Jesus comes to an end and our ministry begins. So there's a bridge of four verses there that connect us with the Jesus ministry because the object of all that we're going to share with you while we're with you here is that we are the continuers of what Jesus began. That's my perspective of ministry. I am here in this world to continue, keep doing what he did. That's why he gave me the same power that the Father gave him. With that at work in me and through me, then he believes that if I'll, if I'll accept it and embrace it, that I can do everything that he did. That's apostolic ministry. That's not just for the, the fellows and ladies whose names are known. That's for you. Don't ever let these truths fly over your head and say, that's too good for me. It's not. Accept it for you. Our our object is to discover the kind of person God wants us to be. Now, if that's not your object, objective in being here, you might, I don't know, it might be boring to you. But I think if you've paid the cost and made the effort to be a part of a Bible school like Victory Bible Institute, I think you're serious about your life and your calling. So, our objective, let's have it straight from the start, is to become the kind of person that God wants us to be. Why? So we can experience the miracle life of Jesus and continue what he began. He takes us beyond religion to God's miracle life. They're different. Everything about Christianity is a miracle. That's why we call it a miracle life seminar. Miracle is spelled with seven letters. M-I-R-A-C-L-E. It occurred to me to take those seven letters and, and see if I could hook them together and make an acronym out of those seven letters and tie them to seven fundamentals in apostolic ministry. If I could do that, that would be basic, wouldn't it? It would nourish us. Now this is what, this is the, the the substance of these seven lessons is my ministry all over the world. I'll keep saying things like that because I, you haven't been there. I've been there. 
We have a saying, I've been there and done that. I have. All over the world. And I witness to you that with these truths embraced in your spirit, there's no country, no people, no tribe that can resist them. In almost a hundred nations, for almost six decades, I've never seen a crusade fail. Never. Why? Jesus doesn't fail. If we let him be the star, if we let him do his thing, he won't fail. If we're trying to advance our ministry and our stardom to make, to, to count for us, then we'll probably have disappointment times. We don't need to have any with Christ. So this is going to take us, as you already know, most of you, beyond religion. When we get through with this, religion won't mean much to you. The miracle life will mean everything to you. Miracle, seven letters. Miracle Seven miracle dynamics. What's a dynamic? A great pastor in Brazil said, I don't like that word. I don't like for you to put it in your books. I have to translate it. Dr. Suarez from Rio. He said, I don't know what that word means. But when he got through with one of these seminars, he told me, he says, I know what it means now. I like the word. <laughs> Dynamics, it's, an ener it's energizing forces that produce action or motion. Seven miracle dynamics. Seven fundamentals for success with God. Hear me. Now, I'm talking to you. I wouldn't have even come to do this had it not been that you are people who are commit, have committed your life to study God's word and you want to reach out to your world. Otherwise, I wouldn't be interested. I'm old. I haven't got time to waste. Every day is precious to me. I wouldn't have come. But I said to Pastor Billy Joe, if I can invest what I know in them, I'll come. Because I'm going to die and they're going to keep living. So if they'll take it and keep running with it, I'll feel happy and reward. That's why I'm here. So you'll find me very serious. I'm happy, but I'm serious about life. Life is important. Seven fundamentals for success with God. You want success with God or do you want to be me mediocre? Or do you accept mediocrity? Are you willing to have a little church down on the corner? You can have life that way and God won't get mad at you. It'll be lovely. But I'd rather help more people. Seven truths to guide and influence your life. Seven sessions. Every one of them is going to get hotter. I promise you that. Seven concepts to motivate action. Seven essentials in the Christian faith that make it possible for us to continue to do the ministry that Jesus began. Let's read our scripture base, the first four verses, in concert. You ready? The former treatise, come on, I can't hear you, together. The former treatise, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, a little louder, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto his apostles whom he had chosen. Say, I'm chosen. I'm chosen. 
Okay, verse 3, continue, loud. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Today, we're talking, we're beginning this with, a, with this, these four verses, this bridge between the book of Acts and our book, uh, excuse me, the Gospels of Christ and our Gospel. You're writing a Gospel every day. Daisy and I wrote a book before she passed away, the Gospel according to T.L. and Daisy. Mark wrote one. Paul twice mentioned his Gospel, so we wrote ours. And it's printed and it's going all over the world. It's wonderful. The Gospel continues. It's, it's the record of good news that you have experienced in your life. Jesus' ministry in the Gospels, Jesus' ministry in the Acts. Acts continues what Jesus began. And the Acts, as you students know, has no ending. There's no amen. There's no cutoff because we're part of it. Say, I'm part of it. Here are the seven principles of God's miracle life for us, inspired by the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. The first one, all that Jesus... Now, now, Let's look at this acronym to see if this word miracle will work good. Let's take the first one and call it M. Verse 1, all that Jesus began to do and teach. I thought that would be good to start this word miracle with M and call it our model. What he began. Right? Right? The second one, I, okay, until the day he was taken up. If that, watching him until he was taken up is the greatest inspiration that I know about in my Christian life. If I'm ever down, I remind myself of him until the day he was taken up. I'm inspired. What about the R? M I R. He, through the Holy Ghost, gave commandment. All right, think about that. How can we get an R out of that? He gave commandment, He gave us His mandate. When you receive a mandate from God, you got to do something about it. So I said, that's it, our response to God's mandate. Of course. You know, there are people who spend their lives and never respond to what God says. They're responding in life to things and influences all over the, all around them, but I want to respond to the right voice. That's the R, M-I-R. A. He, how can I get an A out of this? He commanded those whom he chose. He chose, and I added and sent forth. When he chose, when he chooses us for action, when he chooses us to execute his mandate, I said, that's it, that takes action. So, 
so I, say, I call it our action as his delegates. This is a little lesson on how to get a sermon. Think, think, ponder, values, put them together, and they'll make you hot when you get up to talk about them. <laughs> I'm taking it easy because you're deciding whether you like me or not. And I hope you do. <laughs> you're figuring me out whether I was, I'm as nice as the last fella and all that. It's all right. That, we got to do that. I'm your friend. I love you. I want to stay close to you. I believe in you. I'm here for you. I'm a success. Not because me, but I've let Jesus do his thing through me. And that's what I want to impart to you. Action. You got it? Our, uh, he, he commanded those whom he chose. Well, if he's chosen us for a mandate, we got to do something. Our action as his delegates, we represent him. We're, wherever we are, whatever we do, we do it in his name. All that we do here, we do in his name. All that he does there, he does in our name. Say, wow. I like that word. It's short for hallelujah. The countries I go to, they can't say hallelujah. That's too long a word. I teach them, wow. The next part of that verse. He showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. I said, where can I get the C out of that? And then I thought, oh, yes, many infallible proofs. That is the credibility, C, credibility of the gospel. We're credible. The poor devil isn't. That's why when I get there, he leaves. I don't have to cast him out. He knows the message I'm coming with, and he cannot resist it. And it's the same for you. That's not because it's the great TLO. There's no great TLO. There's the great this. Say, I like it. Next portion. He was seen of them 40 days Speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, the government of God, the, the real network of God, the real stuff he talked to them about. How can I get an L out of that? Well, I thought, yeah, that's stronger yet. Wait till we get to that one. And, <laughs> yeah. L for the legality of our faith. After the credibility of the gospel, then the legality of our faith. Think what that means. The poor devil's thinking. He's worried wherever you go and show up, if you get this in your spirit, he'll say, not that one. They caught on. The next one. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. How can I get an E out of that? And then I thought, wow, this is better yet. E for ex, the, the experience of his energy in me. The E, the experience of his energy in me. Now you're going to have a sheet to go with every one of those statements that are so packed that <laughs> you're going to be turned on. Don't lose them. Hang, them. hang on to them. If an accident would happen and you'd lose one, we'll replace it. But you hang on to them and, 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 and get them in you. Oh boy, I love this. We'll answer. Now, are you ready? You can't write all this down, but you can write what you can, what you can't get the tape and catch it from the tape. We're going to answer during these seven sessions seven major questions. T 
today in the model that God wants us to follow. What Jesus began to do. Here's the question for today. I'll come back to it after I preview you on these others. Today, what unlocks God's miracle life in us? Or I have some little questions to follow each one of these. Or how do we know what God is like? Have you seen him? Without miracles, is Christianity just a religion? Is it credible? Can lay persons share in miracle ministry? On what level? Those are questions that we'll come back to and solve today. Next Monday, the question for next Monday that has to do with until the day he was taken up, the inspiration of his example. Here's the question, the major question for next Sunday. What makes the Christian faith more than a religion or a philosophy? Now you can tell I'm getting worked up. It's the hardest thing in the world for me to come in here and not preach. You know, I'm going to try to keep it down. But if I keep it down, you'll get to looking dull. So i got to keep you up there. <laughs> I repeat, what makes the Christian faith more than a religion or a philosophy? Can you prove the difference? You will after next, sun, next Monday. And you'll have a little sheet of paper that you can shove in the devil's face any corner you meet him and say, hey, buddy, read this. <laughs> yeah, poor, poor devil. Poor devil. What makes it more? Or some other little questions. The early church imitated Christ literally. Should we today? Good question. Ponder it. Decide. You are making decisions while I talk. You will not hear these truths and remain neutral. You are deciding yes or no. I believe it, I don't believe it. Strong, too strong, not strong enough. I'm for it, I'm not for it. That's pride, that's haughtiness. I can't go for that. You are making those decisions. Watch them, they're taking place in your spirit while I talk, I am a servant of God sent from God to you for seven sessions. That's not bragging. That's fact. That's apostolic fact. I've come to you as his delegate. And you will decide all the way through these talks. And it'll be subconscious, in your subconscious that you'll make those decisions. I'm for that. That's too much. I can't go that far. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm not qualified for that. No, no. Or, or he's blowing, or he's bragging, or he's been too far. The old man's getting proud in his old day. You, you, something will whirl in your brain. Watch it. Watch it. That's not a bluff. That's not a threat. No, not if, if you don't agree with it, God will get you. No, 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 not that. If you don't agree with it, you'll miss a lot of good stuff. But God will still be happy with you and try to bless you. If you can't take these truths, then he'll try to send someone else with some other truths to try to bless you. God don't get mad at people. Just preachers and people get mad at people. God don't have to. The preachers will do that for him. Little questions. The early church imitated Christ literally. Should we? Another little question. Is it a little question? Pretty big question. Are his, con we're talking about, is the Christian faith a f more than a philosophy or a religion? Little question. Are his concepts workable or are they just a part of history? Now, when I said that, your brain went to work and, 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 and you decided what you would think about that while I was saying it. 
You didn't know you'd reached that decision, but you did. Watch it. Keep it in control. Another little question. Are biblical miracles needed in this century? A woman over in Belgium said, we don't need them. We have medical science. Okay, third, the R, the, our response to his mandate. He gave commandment, our response to his mandate. What's the big question for that lesson? What brings out God's best in a person? Boy, that's, a, that's going to be a great session. Smaller question. Is Christ's miracle ministry applicable in today's world? Come with me, you'll find out it is. Do you have a call from God? How do you know? How do you know? What can you shove under the devil's nose that'll make him shut up and run? If not, if you don't have a call, why? Why? Face it, decide why. Do some Christians not have a ministry? Good question. The fourth session, we'll deal with action as his delegates because Christ chose us. Right? Big question for that session. What happens when we discover how much God trusts us? Now, you'll have a piece of paper on that day that'll say that. And on the back, it'll have the outline of what we're going to teach. What happens when we discover how much God trusts us? Some little questions to go along with that in case that doesn't rouse you. Are only certain people chosen vessels of God? Watch it, you Pentecostals that have got some folks with a special anointing, you trot around and hunt them at their convention and want them to touch you and give you some of their anointing. My Lord, I'd never want to do that. I want my own from God, direct, no second-hand anointing. Okay, question for the fourth session. Are only certain people chosen vessels of God? Are you one of them? Is that too big for you? You made a decision right then. It clicked. Watch it. Another little question. To whom? We're talking about the discovery of how much God trusts us. Little question. Not a little one, a big one. To whom, to whom does God entrust his miracle power? You answer that. You're answering it right now. In, in, watch it. To whom does God entrust his miracle power? What did you decide? Can you say it out loud? <laughs> to whom? Okay, it's good. One more little question. Are others more qualified for spiritual matters than you? Big deal. Well, you decided that right then. Fifth session. We'll talk about the credibility of the gospel. He showed himself alive. Question, big question, important question. What makes our Christian witness 
believable? What makes you and me credible? Now that's real to me because Daisy and I went to India in 1945 before any of you was even born. And, 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 and we weren't credible to the Hindus and Muslims. And we came home broken hearted. You won't have to do that. That was a sad, almost tragic experience for us. We almost quit the ministry. What makes us believable, the Christian witness believable? What proof do we offer to the people to whom we witness, public or individual, what proof do we offer that Jesus Christ is alive? Otherwise, we're a Muslim. Muhammad is, Muhammad is dead. Jesus is dead. They tell us all over the world he's dead. When I go, I have to prove he's not dead. Thank God I found out how. I repeat that little question. What proof do we offer that he's alive? Or does it matter? Can we find a nice ministry and a good repertoire of nice sermons without having to get into that deep stuff? It's up to you to decide. You're deciding it during, during this session and during your time in Bible school at VBI. Whether that's too much trouble, just take it easy. What you going to do? Think about it. Another little question. Do Christian rituals without miracles have life-changing power? Good question. Do you need that again? Do Christian rituals, don't blame the Catholics, the Protestants are just as bad. Rituals, ceremonies. We've got, if we don't watch in the charismatic movement, we'll have it just as memorized as the Catholics have theirs, but they're just different words. Do Christian rituals without miracles have life-changing power? If they don't, what are we going to do with them? Another little question. One more little one. I don't want to leave you hanging on this one. It's too important. Say, I'm ready. If we don't share Jesus Christ, oh, this is heavy. If we don't share Jesus Christ, is it because really we don't believe in him? You share everything you believe in. Check that one out in your own spirit. The sixth session, can you take some more? You don't know what, by the time we get through, that's why I'm giving you these papers, because it's a, it's a bridge. They'll remind you what we did last time. And you'll come in here hot to trot every time, ready for the next one, okay? I'm making an investment to give you that paper. Our staff's making an investment to print it and someone coming out here and giving it to you. I'm telling you, they're hot. Amen. Poor devil. He didn't want me to get in here to VBI and do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was I? The sixth one. About our le the legality of our faith. He spoke to them concerning the kingdom of God on that part. The legality of our faith. Did you ever feel legal? <clears throat> you ever feel illegal? <laughs> Big question for that session. How does Jesus minister today in our community, in our nation? How? An old Methodist said something to me uh, when, I, when I attended the Methodist camp out here in eastern Oklahoma, Harry Denman, a great method, a saint. And he would lean over the desk. He didn't have any voice left, just a growl. 
you know, he leaned over the desk and said, can you tell me one thing Jesus Christ can do in your community without a body to do it in? Wow, when I heard that, that spun my head and birthed a whole new level of ministry in, 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 the, in the Osborne ministry. That one statement. I'll let you cook on that. How does he minister today? Little question. Can, oh, this is good. You ready? Say, I can take it. I can take it. Say, I'm serious. I'm serious. How, no, can the Holy Spirit do God's work without us? Oh, this one's heavy. You want this one? This, oh, you, pen, you, you charismatics, you've got to have this one. You've got, usually, all of our meetings, I've never conducted a Pentecostal meeting in my life. All of our meetings overseas, all, are always Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of England, Pentecost. In fact, the last one, one of the biggest we've ever had, 130,000 people there, and, and the Pentecostals wouldn't come. But had 400 Methodists and, and 500 Baptists, and Lord knows how many other people all can, but one of the big group of the Pentecostals who think they're so important, they, they didn't want to be part of it. So, so, so I said that to say, you Pentecostals, you need this. You ready for it? Will you take it? Okay. Can we send angels to minister in our place? Say, wow. wow. Say, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> you have to say on that. You didn't want to do that. That's because you're making your decision. See, your brain's all tangled up. You're trying to work on that other, so you didn't want to talk until you got that solved. So, okay, I'll repeat it to help your brain a little bit. Can we send angels to minister in our place? Pastors are telling us we can. Or, no, can we send them in our place and to do the work that Jesus commissioned us to do. Boy, that's handy for Pentecostals. We don't have to do it if it's tough. We can get on our knees and send the angels. They'll go do it. Don't be fooled. I'm going to rain on that parade in the sixth session. What does Jesus look like in our community. One more. Final. When we talk about E for experience, the experience of his energy. He said, wait for the promise. Don't go off half cocked. Wait for the promise. Big question. Big question. Maybe the biggest question of all. How big can possible be in you? Think about it. You're thinking about it. How big can it be? Little question. How can Jesus be the same today as he was in Bible days? How? You want him to be? You believe he is? How? He can't without you. You're going to turn him loose on the world and let him be what he was in Galilee? It won't work. How big can he be in you? That's as big as he can be. In no community will he be any bigger than he is in you. level of ministry is realistic for your life. You're deciding that during this, during, during VBI. 
And we could reword it and say, how big can your ministry be? As big as you let possible be in you. If you try to be the star, you try to run everything, you try to do everything, you believe it's your anointing and your power and your faith, then it won't be very big. But if you let Jesus be the star and get it settled at your beginning that just exactly what Jesus said, I can of mine own self do nothing. I know that's easy to say. That's a cliche. But, but, but then we turn around and we talk about our anointing and our power and we touch people and we like them to fall or something and, and show how important we are. We want the stardom. We don't want Jesus to be the star. He does the work. How big can he be in you? What's your level? What, what, what's realistic for your ministry? Is God limited? Ladies, hang on. Buckle in your seat belts. This one's for you. Is God limited by living in you? In a woman? In a lay person? Is he? During these, during these seven sessions, you'll be refreshed by a greater understanding of your own life and ministry. Your faith will be stronger. Your hope will be brighter. Your love will be deeper. Your life will be fuller. Believers were called Christians. That meant like Christ. That meant doing what he was doing. These seven studies will take us beyond religious formality and ritual to the miraculous life of the early church. Today we focus on all that Jesus began to do and teach. Our question, what unlocks God's miracle life in us? What turns the switch and makes the miracle life in you function? The answer? To see the Christ life as the model for our life. I said to see it, to have the Christ life in perspective as our model. We are sent to do what he did. We do it. That turns on, unlocks God's miracle life in us. We don't pray through to do it. We don't fast 40 days to do it. We go do it in his name. Let him be the star. Let him work through us. But he is the example. He's the model. He's the one we look to. The first principle of this seminar is to see in Jesus the model of what God wants us to be, to do, and to have. Hallelujah. Okay. If you turn your paper over, you'll see five questions that we're going we're gonna to deal with. Let's look at them. Who was Jesus? What was his mission? What did he, why, did, why did he need to come? What did he begin that we need to continue? And what unlocks his miracle life in us? That's what we're after. That's the study for today. Who is this man, Jesus? Who is this man who is our model? Let me answer briefly. He is the incarnation of God. Now that sounds swimmy and theological, so that probably didn't, didn't ring a bell. But in how you believe it, that's one of those cliches that we get used to. But come with me and face 130,000 people, half of them, a third of them Muslims, and, and you'll want to know about this incarnation of God that lives with you. That's important. See, think about it. God, he is God's revelation of himself in human flesh. From the time Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden of Eden, 
the image of God began to be distorted and confused by culture, by tradition, and especially by religion. After thousands of years, the true image was so warped and so confounded that God sent his son to reveal himself. Keep that straight in your mind, young people. It's very vital. John 10, 30, Jesus said, I am and my father are one. Look at me a moment. Remember this statement. Everything Jesus said about his rapport with the Father, you can say the same. We don't practice that. We think that's bordering on sacrilegion. No. Jesus came to show us how. Say that out loud. Jesus came to show us how. Everything he said about his rapport with the Father, you can say. Learn to say it. Believe it when you say it. And act accordingly. That will make you ready anywhere without praying through. What do you pray through? Don't need to do that. If you know certain truths about redemption, you are through all the time. I can meet the devil on any corner. I'm ready. He knows it. That's not bragging. We have, you got, you got to get your, you got to figure out what's bragging and what's fact. It depends on your attitude about it. After, th after thousands of years, his true image was so warped and confounded that he had to send Jesus to reveal himself. John 14, 10. I don't think I finished reading John 10, 30. I and my father are one. Can you say that? Yes. Verse 38. I want you to know, he said, and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Every time I walk on a platform before a field of people, I tell the people God sent me to them. I told you, I've told you already, God sent me as his delegate to you. I don't go anywhere on a goose chase. I'm too important. I'm a messenger. I'm old. I've been a long way. I've learned a lot of things. I've proven what I'm talking about and I want to get to as many people as I can because it's wonderful what I know. If I had known some of this, we wouldn't have failed in India. We didn't have Bible schools like this. Books like I write and like other people write, they, 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 were, they didn't exist then. I finally got Kenyon's books after we failed and came home. That changed our life, but I tore all the covers off of every one of his books because no preacher in my organization allowed that you, that you read Kenyon. Kenyon was a rebel. Thank God for Kenyon. John 14, 10. The Father dwells in me. Verse 11. Believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me. <laughs> That's our message. What do you tell when you go preach? You want a sermon? That's it. And then make it credible. Wait till we get to that part. Yeah. Yeah. John 13, 15, I have given you an example, a model that you should do as I have done. Is it pride to say my mission is to carry on what Jesus began? No, he said do it. 
It's faith. Apostolic faith. Gospel faith. Jesus kind of faith. Say, I like it. John 14, 19. Because I live, you shall live also. Oh, I love to tell that to crowds of people. There's life in me from God and it burns in me. It's wonderful. And because I have it, you're going to have it. You're going to live with the same life. I tell, that's my sermon. I hear some preachers preach. I say, that would never translate. You could never translate that. That wouldn't go. I don't want a sermon that won't work under any shade tree with any tribe, primitive or otherwise, on a riverbank around the world. If, they can't, if I can't tell it to them, I don't want it for the bigwigs. That was an unkind word to say. Sorry, I, take, I can't take it back. It went out. You've got it. John 14, 19. That's why I think before you talk. John 14, 19. Because I live, you shall live also. Verse 19. I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. We are one, in other words. We all drink from the same fountain and live with the same life. If you love me, listen to this. Did you get this? Verse 23. If you love me, I'm talking about who is this man, Jesus. If you love me and keep my words, my Father will love you, and we, we, him and me both, we will come to you. I love it. This is my sermon. And we will make our abode with you. Wow. When I say these truths, I think of so many people around the world that I've seen come to life. I'm thinking now of a little leper woman, ashamed, wouldn't come in the crowd, couldn't come in the crowd. Nobody wants a leper close to them. Her hands all drawn, part of the joints gone, sores on her face, everything. Her back was stiff, stood up there, lived in a little under some tin down by the canal. She came way out. First night, she was healed. I didn't know anything about it. Don't give me the credit. I told those uh, Swedish inter uh, reporters that came to the airplane to meet me, they were so cocky. You know, Sweden is, if you're from Sweden, you know, so atheistic, so uh, almost hating God. Thank God for Ulf Ekman over there. He's, he's causing the devil a lot of trouble, but, uh, but they're... Uh, these, these reporters said sarcastically. They had their notepads out and their cameras and we were walking to the uh, end on the ground. Said, well, Reverend Osborne, have you come to Sweden to raise the dead? Isn't that cute? <laughs> what sarcasm. And I stopped and I looked at him and I said, hey, You've heard things, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I said, don't blame me for all of those wonders. <laughs> they didn't know what to do with that. And they wrote a good article. <laughs> they sure did. Those infidel reporters wrote a good article. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't blame me. I didn't know about it. Why cuss me? I just gave the gospel. The gospel does its work. I don't have to have the honor. I don't hang my shingle out, say I'm a healer of lepers. No, Jesus is the healer of lepers. But he needs our voice. We'll make our abode with you. Not just a visit. We'll come and set up headquarters at your house. Glory to God. That's the way I live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abide in me. I'll abide in you. I'm the vine. You're the branches. We have the same life. You see yourself like that? Who is this man, Jesus? 
He's our model. Who is he? Knowing these facts about him turns his miracle life on in us. He's in us. He lives in us. My residence is his residence. We are one. I don't have to pray a long time to get him to activate. No, 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 no. He's there all the time. I pray when I want to pray and I feel prayer. But no, not for that. He lives in me. I'm ready any time. Believe that. Believe that. Nourish that. Think about that. Ponder that. Talk that. Jesus was conscious of the Father in him alive all the time. Practice that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who lives in you? You're not alone. Jesus said in verse 36, he said, the works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. The Father himself bears witness of me. Now what about that? The works that I do bear witness of me. What do you do? See, John, he was confused, so he sent a, a, a committee over to Jesus' meeting, said, I want to be sure that this is him. What did they come back and say? They said, well, what we saw was the blind saw and the deaf heard and the lame walked and all that. John must have said, okay, I don't need any more. I know that's him. Those are the things that only God can do. The works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. A recent meeting, three insane men in chains, hands and feet from three different villages. None of them knew about the other one. I didn't know about any of them. In different parts of the multitude, three of them healed one night. Someone took pictures of one of them sitting on the ground out there and the crowd around him gawking and looking, hands tied, feet tied. All three of them were healed. How? Did I do that? Was that my anointing, special anointing? Is it because I'm the great TL? I didn't even know about it. Like I said to the Swede, don't blame me for that. I didn't have anything to do with it. I gave the message but it's the gospel that's the power of God. It, I tell preachers, and I wish they would listen to, listen to me, if you'll preach the gospel, you won't even have to cast out devils. Well, I know right quick you can say back, wait, Brother Aldrin, Jesus said my name, you know, you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. In my name you shall cast out. Yeah, I know it. If they don't come out, then do it. If they don't clear out before you get to the prayer time, then do it. I can do it. You can do it. In his name, you're his advocate. You're his, you're his delegate. But I find most of them clear out when I get there. And then if they don't, when I'm preaching, they clear. Oh, listen. It's not a great Osborne that these reports come from. You know, crazy people, blind people, deaf people, dumb people, crippled people, carried on carts, they get up, they get well, they get well. It's not Os because Osborne's there, it's because Jesus is there. Yeah. Hardly beat him at being spiritual. <laughs> Try it. You're trying to rev it up and get it so holy. Forget it. He's spirit. You're flesh. But in our Pentecostal doctrine, we condemn our flesh. No, not we say it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal mind is in material against God and all that stuff. No, not me. Yeah, the carnal mind, but not mine. 
Mine is renewed by the word of God. I'm in har I've harmonized my mind with the word of God. I'm not evil. No, 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 no. My mind, my mind is sacred. It's wonderful. It's in tune. That tunes it. You trying to be spiritual? Forget it. God don't need you to be holy. He's holy. We're, 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 we're holy and we're a spirit. Don't, I'm, not, I'm not getting ridiculous here. But the point is, we have what God doesn't have. And he needs it. He is spirit. And if he'd come down here and try to do all these things that you're trying to send him around to do in your prayers, <laughs> you know, him, him and the angels, you're, they're, they're doing all the things that, that he told you to do. You know, you, you know there's two prayers he'll never answer. One is what he's already done. And the other is what he told you to do. <laughs> he'll never answer those prayers, either one of them. But see, he's spirit. But if he comes down here and tries to do, he, he's sitting up there, hey, are you, say, I'm listening. He's sitting up there with big ideas, but he can't bring them off. Is that sacrilegious to say that? No. The old Methodist was right. Can you tell me one thing that Jesus can do in your community without a body? No. No, you're praying for him to come down in a cloud and sweep and minister in the hospitals and minister in the prisons and bless the, no, he's not. No, you're wasting your time. Get up off your knees and quit. It's a waste of time. Oh, that's what he told you to do. Jesus didn't send the spirit around all over Galilee and Judea to fix the people. He went. He journeyed throughout the country. He touched them. He spoke to them. He took them in his arms. That's what we are. We're his body. He's our model. Hallelujah. Who is this man, Jesus? You got it? I didn't finish what I started to say a while ago. He's spirit. You're flesh. See, the deal is we give him our flesh. He gives us his spirit. And that's a Christian. That's a Christian. The combination of God and you together. A Christian like Christ. Isn't that powerful? Powerful, powerful, powerful. <sighs> Who is this Jesus? <laughs> He's the rock of our salvation. He lives in you. The miracle worker of the ages is pouring his life through you right now. The Messiah, Christ the Messiah, is the anointed one at your house today. The living word of God is speaking for you right now. Christ the Son of God is with you and in you. The living bread of life is alive in you. The light of the world shines through you. The open door to God is in you and through you today. Don't miss these. Every one of them will preach. The living truth of God is alive in you. He confirms God's word in your life today. He who died for your sins is saving you right now. He who justified you from all sins is standing in your defense today. The wisdom and power of God is resident in you right now. He who is the sure foundation makes your life stand solid in the worst of storms. If I was reading these in Africa, they'd be shouting me down. You couldn't hear a thing by now. He who is love in action is loving and living through you. The God of all comfort gives you courage when times are tough. He who is the image of God is being reflected through you today. The light that shines from God is shining through you today. 
He who has re, 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 redeemed you is standing strong inside of you. The oil of his anointing is your crown of victory today. Who is this man, Jesus, our model? Hebrews 1.3 says, Christ is the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. Matthew 1.23 says, A virgin shall be with child, bring forth a son. They'll call his name Emmanuel. God with us. John 1.14, the word was made flesh. Remember what I said? He's spirit, we're flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, dw lived among and we beheld him. We looked at him. John 1.18, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten son, he's declared him. He's revealed him. I look at Jesus and see God. John 14, 9, he that's seen me has seen the Father. The greatest biblical fact of human history is that Jesus showed us what God is like in human flesh. That's what I preach all over the world. You say, what gives that old man 80 years old energy to go and do and preach under the sun twice a day, hours, all over the world, any language, with an interpreter. What? The Father and I are one. It's his energy through me. I'm not trying to be the star or the king. He gets the glory. It's him that's doing the work. Jesus showed us God in the flesh. So that we, God's offspring, are to be like him. Look at me. Think. Think about this. If you don't know what God is like, you don't know what you're to be like. Come with me to India and preach and teach that. Let me say that again. If you don't know what God's like, you don't know what you're to be like. I know what God's like by looking at Jesus. He's my model. I know what I'm to be like. When I see Jesus, I see God's design for me. Hindus don't know about him. A judge said, I've been a complete skeptic. I've, I've, I've tried religion, but it hasn't helped me. I'm not sure I would want a personal God, even if I could find one. A Hindu judge, a thinking man, but without the gospel. I heard a man who wanted to see God, and when, when it was revealed to him, he had seven heads. I don't think I'd like a God with seven heads. A high caste in Indian said, I don't like the Christ of your creeds and of your churches, but I'm interested in your Christ seated by the wayside, healing the blind, touching the unclean lepers. I'm interested in the Jesus who spoke of good news to despairing people, to the one that you Christians tell us arose from the dead and came back so he could keep on helping people. I could love and follow that Christ today. When I look at Jesus, I think I can see how God is. And if that's how he is, he has my heart forever. The whole world is saying that. That's the purpose of our ministry of crusades out in a public place. If we go in a building, then... Uh, the, 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 Followers of other religions won't come. That's why we do that. I feel the cry of the lonely and the hurting people that don't know what I know. 
And oh, what a joy to come to them and tell them, God has sent me as a messenger to give you good news. It works. A great Hindu philosopher in Lucknow, India, said this, and this shocked me when I heard this. He said, what a tragedy when Christ, when Christianity broke with Christ. You from Ukraine, both of you, I love you. You're wonderful people. You know what the orthodox is. You know what religion is. Formality without life. They, across the world, religion has broken with Christ and invented a new gospel for themselves. Another great philosopher made this statement. He said, what a world awakening would come if Christianity and Christ could be reunited. The world is saying that to us. That's the world I face. That's the world I prepare for. That's the world I go to teach. That's the world I go to bless. The greatest news that has ever been transmitted to humankind. And here in America, it's a ho-hum idea. And it hardly makes you blink an eye. But the greatest news that's ever been transmitted to humankind is the news that God is like Jesus. He's our example. He's my model. He's who I follow. He said, I've given you an example. Do like I do. My appeal to you, going into the ministry, let this get real in you. And then you'll have something to tell your world, whether you go to China or not, wherever. They don't want rituals. They don't want creeds. They don't want religion. They want life. Question, what unlocks the miracle life of God in us? Answer, see the Christ life as the model for our life. Are you with me? Now, I got to wrap this up so I can't, I can't preach it. I got to page two. I, I got one part of seven. See, it'll be that way every time. I'll, I'll do my best to get as much as I can to you. But an hour and a half just goes so quick. You can't do it. <laughs> Up there in other countries, they'll stay with me two, three hours and be shouting all the way through. It's wonderful. I mean, I'm not saying that to put you down. I'm saying that to entice you. Come and run with me. We'll do you good. Let's go. The world needs us. The world, over here, you know, it's beautiful. And thank God for America. We have helped the whole world. Isn't that true? Let's go tell them the good news. The, you know what I told the Ukrainian parliamentarians when I met with them? When I met with I said, hey, you guys, you're the lawmakers. There's a there's hundred parliamentarians that make the laws of Ukraine. And they, <coughs> they heard about our ministry, <coughs> heard what we were teaching. They liked it, so they wanted me to have lunch with them. I did. <coughs> They liked it so much, they wanted to have another lunch. I met with them again, and that's when I give it to them. I thought, you've asked for it twice. It's time you understand some things. I said, I said, you guys are the lawmakers. Some of the lawmakers, there's more came the second time. And I said, listen, you can, you can make laws to punish bad people, but you can never make laws to make people good. Amen. They had never thought of that. They had never thought of that. That so affected them that they accepted my book, book, The Good Life, and gave it to the 100 parliamentarians in session, and the president was on seat. So we, in their language, it's published in their language. What a wonderful gift. What a wonderful gift. This country, I love this country. I, and when I, what I said about being over here, we've made the, we're, make, we're helping the world. You believe that? And I told those parliamentarians, I said, hey, 
Look, you see our skyscrapers? You see our tall buildings? You see our wonderful constitution the way it's displayed? And you see how our government functions and our army is so great and good? And I said, you think that's the great America? I said, no, that's not the great America. You've missed it. The great America is the preachers. I scolded them. I said, it's the preachers. The preachers are three or four times a week teaching the people don't steal, don't kill, don't hate, don't despise, love people, help people. And I said, our congressmen and our senators have all grown up in churches where a pastor was telling them, don't steal, don't hate, be good, follow God, pray, treat your neighbor as you want to be treated. I said, that's what makes America big. And I scolded them on that because they was in the process of exporting, why do you say that? Deporting uh, a preacher from Nigeria, a great preacher that had 8,000 members in his church and they was mad at him. He was too big and it scared him. I said, you need him. It's the preachers that will save Ukraine, not your laws. Make your laws. It's good to have them, but you need the preachers on every corner. And hallelujah, they're getting them. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I had to get that off my chest. Number two, what, what was his mission? I can't preach these. I'm just going to give them to you quick. What was his mission? To reveal his father's plan and will on earth. I put this here. His mission was to reveal God in the flesh. Reveal what God is like in a way that we can understand. You get it? That, that's his mission. That's our mission. He condescended to our level so that he could explain himself to the human species. And that's what you and I do. You know what I call us? I call us, I say, we're God's interpreters. You're interpreting God everywhere you go. He's only as good as he is in you. That's why I say, don't try to be spiritual. Be like God. Let God be the spiritual part, but you just let him do his work through you. His mission, to reveal God's love plan. His mission, to reveal God's will. His mission, to reveal what he wants us to be. His mission, to reveal what he wants us to do. What was his mission? To redeem us. I don't have time to go into all the, the scriptures, the beautiful, <laughs> you know, his let me summarize it. His mission was to redeem us to God. Why? So we can be like him. His mission was to demonstrate in human flesh God's original dream that never died. Hallelujah. From, <laughs> from Adam and Eve to us today, God never changed his idea. His mission to pay the price so that his original dream could be shown in us. You got it? Third point on your little piece of paper. Why did he need to redeem us? That's a good question. Why redeem us? Because he's banking on us. He's banking on us. Hey, hey, don't miss this. He's banking on us. And he can't get in us with our sin. He will not cohabit sin. In the Garden of Eden, when they sinned, they were separated from God. It's still that way today. Sin separates us from God. God does not cohabit with sin. Why did he need to redeem us? Because his dream was, we're going to be like him. 
Jesus said, you believe in me? Works that I do, you do also. Greater works. See, follow me. Do what I do. I give you an example. Do the same thing. You got it? Hallelujah. What? So, so his mission was to redeem us. But why? Why re re redeem us? Why redeem us? Re you know what redeem means, don't you? Restored back to just like it was before it had any problem. You know about that, don't you? Put back completely. It's not redeem if it's not restored exactly like it was before. We date back to Adam and Eve before the devil came and tempted them. Perfect, beautiful, full of God, friends of God, walking with God, in fellowship with God, not afraid of God, happy with God, talking with God. We don't know how long they lived like that. That's when we're redeemed, Jesus came. His mission was to redeem us, put us back just like Adam and Eve. And that's what I do every day. I've got pretty flowers around my place. And I go out and walk among the flowers. And I think of Adam walking in the garden. Hallelujah. Beautiful. And I commune with God and pray and talk to him. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. We're redeemed. Redeemed. Why redeem us? Why? Redeem. See, sin has separated us from God, hasn't it? Sin was the problem. Well, God can't come into us with sin. So that's why he redeemed us. Question two, what was his mission? Three, why? Why? He had to come and take our sins away. Now, I'm skipping all, you're smart, you know all the scriptures. I'm skipping all them, but the, if you, I find in America, people need the overall idea. And, and he had to get rid of our sins. How could he do it? The only way he could do it was through substitution. So, he took on himself our sins. Now, I don't understand that, and you can't, Explain that. That's the part. Wait till I get to the credibility of our faith. Because part of the gospel is incredible. Wait for that. Oh boy, that's going to be a powerful lesson. See, because when, when you tell people that Jesus bore our sins, that's incredible. How? Two thousand. Don't. Don't feed me that bunk. No, 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 no. 2,000 years ago, you're telling me he took my sin. I just committed, I just murdered a guy yesterday or whatever I did wrong yesterday. You tell me he bore it, he died. No, 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 no. Don't feed me that. That's religion. That's philosophy. Can't be. How do you prove it? <laughs> the works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. When the blind see and the deaf hear and the lame walk and, and the discouraged get happy and, and, the, and the dishonest become honest and lives are changed, that's the proof. You understand what I'm saying? Why did he come? Why did he need to redeem us? So our sins could be taken away. Next question. After he redeemed us, then, of course, the reason was, don't miss this, the reason was so he could take up his abode in us and live in us and be one with it. No sin in T.L. Osborne. Jesus lives there. The righteousness of God is imputed to me. I'm right with God. Well, if I'm all fixed up, <laughs> that's, that's the third question, isn't it? Why redeem us? Fourth question. You ready? <laughs> what did he begin that we're supposed to continue? If we're fixed up, what are we supposed to do? What he did. I got to skip that. What he did. One more. What unlocks this miracle life. What turns it loose, puts it in action so that we can do his thing. Back to starting point. See the Jesus life as the model for our life. 
do like he did. John 20, 21, as the Father sent me, even so I send you. John 17, 18, as you've sent me, even so have I also sent them. 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world. You're not shouting, but you're taking it in. Mark 16, go preach this gospel to every creature. John 14, 12, he that believes in me, or she that believes in me, the works that I do, shall they do also. You, you. Hebrews 12, 2 and 3, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that set before him, I'm part of the joy that was set before him. He saw me way back there, and you, look at you, an army, poor devil. Worried about VBI. I don't blame him. When we, when, 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 when we, when we pastored church here and uh, wonderful people came uh, and uh, LaDonna, we, 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 we wanted LaDonna to become the pastor and did and she's a great pastor, great woman of God. And I announced, I said, I've rented a tent to put right out there on the parking lot because everybody's saying it won't work. A woman can't pastor. I said, I've rented a tent, and it's free for the devil. I've given him a place to spend all night and sit right out there all the time. I want him to be on location to see it work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You ever tell the devil, don't run off. Don't run off. Come on, I got something. Okay. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. The joy that was set before him, were the joy that was set before him, what would happen through his sacrifice? We constitute that joy. He endured the cross for us, despising the shame. But today, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Consider him. Never quit pondering him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. Oh boy, you can get as old as I am and be as happy and energetic and as thrilled as I am if you take these truths deep so that you can say, I, Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. But righteousness doesn't come by the law. It comes by faith. Hallelujah. Hebrews 1, 3, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, and the rest is history. Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's been at it ever since because there have been people who have accepted the fact that they are chosen of God. You believe that? Hallelujah. I want you to take your, your, your confession, your sheet. Take your sheet and let's stand together and let's read this reverently. <laughs> let's read this out loud. I'm telling you, I wish you could be there when you could hear uh, the Africans or the South Americans <laughs> read it. It's so beautiful, wonderful. But let's read this and see. Give God a chance to vibrate in our spirits. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You ready? Read it. Let's read it. Come on. In concert. Lord Jesus, you open the way for me to know God personally. You came back from the dead and sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in me. Now the ministry that you began is continued through me. Religion distorted God's image, but you revealed what he is like. He created me to be like him. I am his offspring. You are my model. I choose to emulate you. The life that you lived 
is the life I now live. The spirit that I know that you now functions through me. Understanding that unlocks your miracle life in me. God did his work through you. Now it is continued through me. You came to do God's will. Now his will is realized through my life. Religion is a ritual. Your miracle life is you alive in me. My mission is to share your life and love with others. Jesus, you began to do and teach a new way to God. You showed me his life and love in action. Thank you for continuing what you began through what he began. You, your miracle life is unlocked in me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is in this place. You believe it? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your chest. Jesus, thank you that you're alive today. We consider you. We look at you. Our eyes are focused on you. You are our model. Let something wonderful happen in the lives of every person here today. We are yours. We are your interpreters. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I accept this truth. Accept this Let, it truth. Let it become flesh in me. Put my face on this truth. Put this truth in my shoes. Thank you, Lord. You reconciled me. You redeemed me. You forgave me. You changed me. You made me what I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now I'm your representative. I'm your associate. I'm your partner. I'm your interpreter. Hallelujah. If people look at me, they'll see God at work. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.